Hey y'all, it's Miss K. I am here at school. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I figured that I could use this as a way to make sure y'all understand what's going on in the class while you are out. So if you have any questions about anything, you can look for videos here and you always know how you can contact me either through my Instagram, Miss K is quarantined, or at my phone number 252-220-0996 or through my email. So please reach out to me if you have questions. What you're working on yesterday and today is related to text structures, which as you know, we've already talked a lot about. So I'm gonna do a quick overview, just as a reminder about our text structures. So first big category, chronological and sequential. Both of those are about the order of things. Sequential is about the order of things in a step-by-step -step process. Chronological is about the order of things that happen in a timeline. So if it's, for example, if you're talking about the events that happened that led to the spread of the coronavirus, that's chronological. But if you talk about the steps to making sure you're safe during the coronavirus, that's a sequential text structure. The next one we have is compare and contrast. Remember compare telling you what's similar, contrast telling you what's different. And so for compare and contrast text structure, you're looking for similarities and differences. So one could be the similarities and differences between the flu and the coronavirus. I hope you're noticing a theme to these examples. The next one is categorization. Categorization is when you're sorting information into different categories to help people understand the process of everything that's going on. So for example, if I sorted the coronavirus into its symptoms, symptoms related to how they impact different groups of people, that'd be categorization. The next one is cause and effect. Cause and effect telling you about why something happened and the reasons of the outcome or the impacts of that event happening in the first place. So for example, the cause of the coronavirus spreading is that people aren't staying in their homes. And the effect of it is that more people keep getting the virus. So keep social distancing y'all, please. And the last thing is problem solution. Problem, you lay out the problem and you lay out possible solutions. That one is really straightforward. So for example, the problem, we have the coronavirus. The solutions, wash your hands, stay at home, connect with people through digital ways instead of going to see them, avoid elderly people, all of those types of things. That's a problem solution text. The last text structure is descriptive. Descriptive is when it's, when it's telling you about something and that's it. It's not doing anything else about your information, it's just telling you about it. So remember, the descriptive text is if it doesn't fall into any of the other categories, then it's descriptive. So what you're working on is in this book, everyone should have this book. Yesterday, you should have completed pages 176 through 181. And today you should be completing pages 182 through 189. So today what you're doing is you're reading two texts this one is about getting loopy, the physics behind roller coasters, and the other one, currency in the United States. And then what you're doing with each of these is that you're answering questions related to the text structure. So each of them have a set of multiple choice questions that go with it. See right now that's on page 184. So use those questions to help you answer the last one here because this one, remember, goes back to the key point we talked about a lot, which is that text structure and author's purpose are intrinsically related. You can't separate them from each other. So you can use your notes on text structure to help you figure out the author's purpose, or you can use the author's purpose to help you figure out the text structure. So you should be going through these two today and filling out these questions. And then once you've done that, you'll be set, except if you check Google Classroom, I've also put up a Quizlet where you can practice EOG vocab. You should be doing that about 10 minutes per day to make sure that you're staying on top of what we need to learn for the end of the year. So I believe in you guys. I think you're super awesome. I miss you a lot. And if you have questions, again, please contact me. That's what I'm here for. All right, see you tomorrow.